um, and can everyone see my screen, right? I'm sharing yep. the slide. Yeah. All right. Yep. Cool. Thank you. Cool. So hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's um, APAC community call. So today we'll be talking about um, not only the Odyssey news, but also kind of a preview of the Odyssey uh, Global Symposium that's upcoming next week. And then we also have two presenters uh, here to talk about network studies. So without further ado, so Mui, I will turn that to you um, for the Odyssey news. All righty. I am actually not going to focus on the Odyssey news and basically spend the time talking to you guys, giving a preview of Odyssey, it's, uh, the symposium itself. So um, can you guys see my screen now? Yeah. yeah. So the symposium, uh, if you go to odyssey.org and if you click on the information page, you can get all of this information. So the symposium, if you haven't registered, go register for it, does kick off on Sunday, September 12th. Um, starting at 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So all the times, all of the times I'm going to talk about is in Eastern Standard Time. Okay, they're starting off with a tutorial. Um, it's uh, learning how to build concept sets tutorial. There is still, I believe, potential room for you guys to register if you have not registered for this. Um, I think there's over 120 participants right now. So if you guys still have an interest, you can click this little link and register. Okay. Day two, there is on September 13th, also from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., there is a workshop that's aiming at reproducing a lot of the different uh, populations from uh, a paper that you would have to have read beforehand. So if you uh, have registered, there's two ways to register here. One is a collaborator. A collaborator really means someone who's willing to actually be participating as part of the group that's doing the work. Um, so either one, you can have data, or two, you don't have to have data. You can help build cohorts using the public atlas, right? Um, so you don't always have to have data, but either you have data or you want to help uh, replicate the actual study by building cohorts and building uh, negative controls, positive controls, whatever it may be, right? Um, or you can watch as an observer because you don't want know how to do it and you want to see how they do things. Um, you can register as both. So here is registering as a collaborator. Here is registering as an observer. So feel free to go pick one of those if you guys have an interest. Of course, the whole thing will be in English. Okay. Now, day three and four are the main symposiums. Um, and the way the calendar works, again, at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, there will be a state of community address. If you really want to learn more about the actual details, you can click on the videos here. Uh, Patrick actually went through a lot of the details in the last, uh, in yesterday's uh, Odyssey Global community call. Um, but uh, basically, at high level, there will be a state of uh, community address, and in there will be an Asia Pacific address as well. So we did do a uh, eight minute video on you know where the Asia Pacific side is. Um, and then from nine to uh, nine o'clock to uh, 11 o'clock, there is a, uh, a session on Odyssey impact on COVID-19. There's a, a bunch of different guest speakers who will be talking. Uh, in those, I believe Chan, you're speaking at this particular uh, panel right. as well. So please, you know, join that one to help support the Asia Pacific community there. And then there's actually a reaction panel that will be hosted by Danny uh, from Oxford University uh, with some guest uh, keynote speakers that will be speaking. And then at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, there will be the collaboration showcase. And I won't go into a little, I'll talk about it in a little bit as well as the network session and how that all works, okay? Um, but the next day, uh, day two, we all, I mean, day four here of the main symposium. Um, we do have a collaboration showcase starting at 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to take into account the Asia Pacific side. So again, I'll talk a little bit about how that's gonna work in a bit. Um, and then we have an interaction, uh, interactive session here uh, with, I believe, uh, three keynote speakers that are uh, actually, no, it's a bunch of folks. Uh, I know Kristen's in there, Kristen's in there, but there's a bunch of folks in there that will be uh, talking about how to generate reliable evidence, okay? 
And then we have at 1130, uh, there will be the closing ceremony along with the Titan Awards um, that will be announced. And then at 12 o'clock, there will be a networking session. Okay. If you have already registered for the symposium, you should already in your teams, if you log into your teams, you will have a Odyssey 2021 symposium. Okay. Ignore all the other stuff I have and ignore the one of uh, this other one that I have because I'm part of the prep team. So, um, but in here, what you will see is in the general chat, there's a bunch of hidden channels. Okay. This is where you're going to actually uh, listen to some of the, so, so the way they have it set up, this is that first session on day, day three, right? September 14th. This is that second session on September 15th. Okay. You're going to click in here and you will see that's how you would join the session. But you also also have had an invite to the sessions themselves. Through, through your inbox. But in the general section, what we would love for everybody to do, if you look at, there's a section in here called introductions, okay? What we want, if I scroll to the top, because a lot of people have started doing this, very similar to last year, uh, Patrick would love it if everybody introduces themselves. Let me make this bigger, because I see Chan is squinting. Let me see if I can make this really huge, okay? So it says, welcome to Odyssey, introduce yourself. So very similar to last year, we asked folks to introduce themselves, create a new thread, a new conversation, and introduce yourself. But the above and beyond just saying who you are, we want to learn a little bit about each other. So you can see here, it asks you to introduce yourself, but in addition to like who you are, where you're from, what you do, answer three of three, these questions. Or you can answer all seven of them, okay? Pick three or pick seven and answer. So you can see here, like Patrick says, who he is, what he aims for, blah, blah, blah. Other people have done the same thing. Here's what Kristen has done, right? Uh, George has done the same thing. Roger has done the same thing. So people have replied to him with data here. Wow. Uh, for the uh, Star Wars geeks, right? Data is right there. Um, but everybody, you know, so go ahead, feel free, introduce yourself. The other thing that's also here is the meme. So there's a meme a just like last year. So if you want to start posting your memes in here, feel free. Um, it's just, again, a game activity so folks can uh, post stuff in here. Um, but again, for the actual, there's also a game that will be going on, which I will talk about in a second. But there is, this is the name, the collaborator uh, rule. Uh, so you'll see the rules are all here. They're hidden hints. Uh, basically, how you're going to do that, I will walk through this in a in a sec. Is you have almost like a bingo card, okay? And you'll have the um, the people um, from what they look like now, and then what they used to look like when they were babies. And basically, you have to match them up, okay? You have a card that has the people of what they look like, but then how do you find like uh, their baby pictures? Okay, I'll I'll go over that in one second. Okay, but that's the game that's there. So if you guys want to, you can play with it. The rules are all out here, but I'll explain it to you in a second as well. Lastly, there is technical support here. So if you have any problems or if one of your folks has a problem, put that in here. They will, uh, somebody else will help you um, with all that. Now, collaboration showcase and the game I just talked about and the networking sessions, right? How that's all going to work. Okay, so. What you're going to get if you, again, have signed up for the symposium, um, the Friday before the symposium, you will get instructions to a, an environment called GatherTown. Okay? What is GatherTown? This is GatherTown. Okay? Um, GatherTown, it's a website that you will get an email. They'll say, hey, here are the instructions. Here's how you can get to things blah, 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 and then you will get a link from GatherTown that has the link uh, to uh, the actual event, uh, to the actual website, okay? So what you'll ultimately get is something similar to this, but don't look at this because this is my email because I'm a helper on there. So you'll get a little email that says you've been invited to GatherTown, click here to join the space, okay? When you click it, we ask that you open it in Chrome, okay? Purely Chrome. Safari does not work so well with this thing. Okay. Safari, Firefox, none of those. Chrome is the best thing to use for this guy. But when you come in, you'll basically create your own little avatar. 
So here, you know, see, this is my avatar. I can change my clothes. It's pretty self-explanatory, so I won't go too much into that. Uh, we ask that you put your full name. Now, as helpers, we have our names either in the back or in the front. That's why you see the word helper. If you have any questions during the whole thing, you can find one of us and ask us. But it's a little place where you can go. So somebody's following me. James must, is following me. <laughs> So you can tag to follow people. So like right here, James tagged to follow me. So I can tag to follow James, but he's following me. Jing is now moving along with me as well. Um, but it's a little environment. If you look at the map here, this is how Gather Town is built out. Okay, this is the networking space that you can be in. Okay, this is where I am. And then these are where the collaboration showcase shows up. You have data standards, clinical application, methodological research, and open source research. Right. Uh, open source development. So you can go during the schedule that I just mentioned here, if you guys want to stay up on you know, September 14th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is either 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. or I think 3.30 a.m. for all of some of you guys, right? You can go there um, and it, look at the collaboration showcases. Um, there's a set schedule. I think it starts with data for the first hour, and then clinical application for the second, methodological for the third, and then the fourth one is open resource. But during those times, the collaborators, the people who have the posters will be there and they'll be talking about it. Each room also has lightning talks, so they will be talking, the lightning talks will be going on as well. So, um, but then afterwards, if you wanna stay in here to network, that's how you network, right? So here, how you'd navigate to one of these spaces is you just walk with using your arrows. Right, like I said, uh, James is following me. So everywhere I go, James is just tagging along, okay? So here I'm going into the clinical application one. So you can see here clinical application. Over here, there's a help desk. You can actually look at the list of posters. Right there, there's the list of posters. Um, or if you wanna go to the lightning talks, you walk all the way down. Lightning talks are at the bottom of every single showcase room. The top are the posters. Whoops, I went into another room. Thanks. Ah, like me. Now I get to walk again. Let's walk. Where am I going? I'm going all the way to the bottom, somewhere over here. So here's the lightning talk. So you can walk into one of these rooms and then it'll say here, click X to watch the lightning room. So you just hit the X, but the lightning talks aren't, it's down here. See, so I can click X to, to, to hear the lightning talks. Typically, if it's during the time that's the post-it, like I said, every hour, there's different times, right? The collaborator who is actually doing the lightning talk may be sitting here and you can talk to the person at the same time, right? So if not, you can just, you know, go off to one of your posters, you can come into here and there you go, there's, you can look at the poster. So that's how the uh, collaboration showcase and everything will work. The other thing that you will find is you'll find these little hidden um, people like these little hidden icons here, okay? This is that name that collaboration game. So you click on it to view the picture of the baby picture of that collaborator. And that's how you would match it up with the adult version of the collaborator, okay? So you see these little guys hidden all over the, um, the, the basically the whole map. And I can go from one room to the other. I don't actually have to go back into the main room. Like here, I can go to the open source. But you can see the little map right there. It'll show you, right? I'm inside the clinical application. I can go back to the main room this way. Open source development this way. Data standard this way. Methods this way. So you don't really have to go back to the main room and walk all the way back and forth. The main room is really for uh, you to do whatever you want. Uh, that's where we network, right? So you can come in here. There's help desk. There's private spaces that you can sit at. So what these little desks are are what we consider private spaces. So if you sit in there, only you and the people that are in that little box can hear the conversation. If you're not in the little box right there in the little space, you can't hear the conversation. Okay. So I know I've taken up 15 minutes, so I'm going to stop talking. Any questions? Try to walk through that as quickly as I can because I know that we have other presenters. I take silence as we have no questions. Cool, you're all going to figure this out. All right, Jing, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Okay, cool. Uh, so next we'll have Silva to um, talk to talk about kind of best practices and kind of how to run um, network study packages. So Silva, would you like me to share your deck or would you share from your side? Uh, yeah, I will share it. Okay, cool. Thank you. 
Okay, so uh, can you all see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so hello everyone. So today in this short session, uh, I will uh, introduce you all to what is a uh, network study in Odyssey community. What does it mean, and how do we do that, and uh, what are some of the challenges and uh, uh, you know solutions that we think can solve those challenges. So yeah. So uh, let's get started. Uh, yeah, so uh, what is a network study? Uh, so uh, network study is nothing but if you are going to run your study across multiple uh, OM Obsidium instances, uh, it is called network study. Uh, a typical motivation to run a network study is usually to increase the diversity of the data sources. You want to see whether your results are generalizable across a uh, different population, different data sources. Uh, if it's yes, uh, then you try to find out some meaningful insights out of it. So when you run your study across different data sources, which are like home obsidian instances, that's what you call as a, a network study in the Odyssey community. So what are some of the steps involved in the network study. Uh, this is uh, usually like any other study design, uh, any other study approach. So we start off by designing the study uh, where the study leads uh, will uh, develop the protocol and include the required study population for doing the experiment, provide details about the cohort definition and things like that, and the time frame uh, to you know, do the study and complete it. And uh, once the uh, protocol is developed, then we move to the feasibility analysis stage where the study lead uh, will exchange the Atlas uh, JSON files or the R packages to assess the feasibility of your data source. For example, uh, uh, most of you here might have known about the APAC hypertension study. So for which uh, you know we were given uh, Atlas JSON files to assess the feasibility of our data source. So we used the JSON files and then you know communicated the feasibility results back to the study lead team, uh, Jingli and Shelling. Yeah. And then once we assess the feasibility, then we and if our data set is found feasible. Uh, then you might want to raise the IRB procedures. You might want to start the IRB process. And then side by side, you can also start with the execution of the study. So during execution, uh, the analysis that you might do might be heavier than just the feasibility analysis. Here you might have, let, for example, you might have R packages that might run for a longer time because here we are trying to do the complete study, execute the complete study. So uh, yeah, so we generate the results. And uh, during this time, uh, what the study leads would do usually is uh, they communicate the progress of the study to the stakeholders, like the Odyssey community members uh, uh, and the global uh, community members as well. So uh, we do that periodic updates. And it's uh, very much possible that uh, you know uh, we usually encounter a lot of uh, technical issues, uh, uh, which we see in detail in the upcoming slide. So we resolve those issues, technical issues, during the execution phase. Once the execution is done successfully, uh, we share the results to the study lead team. Uh, let's say in case of APAC hypertension, we share it with the Jingli team, IQVI team, or in case of uh, a CMOS study, we shared it with South Korea. So once we share the study uh, results uh, from each side, the study leads uh, from South Korea or China, for example, they collate the results from all the sites, and then uh, you know uh, they uh, present it to the community uh, in terms of uh, uh, normal PPT presentation and also via the Shiny app, which you see in the result dissemination section. So uh, uh, as you know, in Odyssey, we follow this open science approach. So all the protocol and the codes and the results uh, are available as open source, like uh, in the Shiny app. So you can just visit the Shiny app to see what are the results. So usually, it's up to the study lead uh, to decide whether they want to display the results in the form of a shiny app or uh, just through a normal PPT. 
Uh, so it's up to the uh, uh, study leads to decide that. And during the result dissemination phase, uh, yeah, so we also work on the uh, manuscript, uh, you know, uh, development and review as well. Uh, so uh, once the study lead aggregates the results, then they'll start working on the manuscript and then they will exchange it with the other participant, other participating sites uh, to review the results and the IRB information and the affiliation information etc uh, to review it and provide any feedback if necessary and one thing that i missed was uh, yeah during the study uh, design and feasibility phase uh, also you are expected to give feedback on the protocol uh, because uh, usually when for example when study leads design a cohort uh, it might be specific to their uh, uh, data set. It could be specific to their data set or to their region. So as a participating site, it is your responsibility to see whether that cohort definition uh, kind of reflects or suits well for your population as well. So you have to make sure the definitions are generalizable. Of course, the study leads with their experience would make sure it is generalizable, but it is also your the participating site's responsibility to make sure the cohort definitions are generalizable for their sites as well. And once all this is done, and the last part is the publication uh, phase, uh, where you agree on the uh, journal where you want to submit and the authorship guidelines uh, uh, where you have to submit the uh, uh, guideline form, ICMJ forms and things like that. So yeah, so all these steps looks uh, pretty straightforward and easy PC, but uh, uh, the real challenge comes uh, 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 when you really get, try to execute the study. So uh, which we will see now. So uh, yeah, so I have listed some of the challenges uh, that we usually encounter or other sites may also encounter. So I've listed them here. One of the major challenges is uh, all the, uh, uh, most of the sites operate in a, a no internet environment uh, where the OMOP CDM instance is hosted in a place where you don't have internet connection. Uh, for example, in our site, uh, we don't have uh, uh, internet connection. So some of the problems that we face due to this is because uh, uh, though the, uh, uh, the, the infrastructure requirements at our sites are you know, useful for us to do our own internal analysis, but then when you want to do uh, Odyssey network research, uh, there are some challenges like you know the uh, operating system version mismatch or some system level libraries are out of date or our versions are out of date. For example, uh, for the analysis that we do at our sites internally, the R versions that we use are fine, right? Like we do our in analysis internally and those R versions are fine. But then if you want to do Odyssey network research, the study leads might have a requirement that, you know, our version has to be greater than four, but then our internal R version might be 3.6. So in that case, uh, without internet, it might be difficult to update your R version for which uh, you know uh, you might have to depend on your IT team to seek their help. And another challenge is uh, uh, your R version, the site where there is no internet, the R versions there uh, may not have all the packages to support the execution of the study. So for which uh, uh, you know if you are in an R gapped environment trying to install packages one might one one by one might really be difficult. In that case, a popular solution which is adopted all across is the RN, uh, which is like a dependency manager. So that can help resolve all the R package uh, uh, dependency issues. Another problem is uh, due to our gapped environment, if you encounter any technical issues, uh, you cannot re uh, refer Stack Overflow or uh, you cannot refer any R Studio forums to fix those errors. So unless and until you are an expert, like a uh, rock star R expert, uh, you will not be able to fix this. Uh, so yeah, so you cannot do this. So some uh, uh, a possible solution to this, at least what I followed was, uh, uh, we have two OMOP CDM instances. One instance is connected to the internet and the other one is not connected to the internet. So in the one, so what I did was I validated or tested the package first 
by running in an internet environment to make sure the R package is working fine. And then I took that to the R gapped environment. So this is how I made sure that the R package is working fine at the code level. Uh, yeah, so that's how I resolved it. But yeah, I welcome any other suggestions from the folks at, uh, at the end of the session. Yeah. And the another common issue that we might encounter is the access rights. So usually in, uh, in the in our side, uh, I don't have the admin rights to make changes to the database. Uh, so usually if I want to create any temporary schema and things like that, uh, I cannot do as of now. So I reach out to the IT team uh, who can uh, you know, help us uh, in creating schema or help us run the R package so that you know, uh, they have the access to create, they have the rights to create schema. So they can just share the results to me. So uh, that's how I do it. Uh, and the other one is, uh, uh, which is a major challenging, uh, painful one for me is, uh, uh, we cannot transfer uh, files, uh, so for which uh, or take screenshots as well. So and I don't have mailbox access as well. Of course, all these processes are in place for a purpose because uh, they want to ensure the safety of data. So yeah. So as a research member, I don't have access to all this. Uh, so I again depend on the IT team who have been very kind to help us. I mean, I think Chidam is here on the call. So he has been very kind to help me throughout uh, in sharing the files and taking screenshots and things like that. So uh, you might want to reach out to the, your IT team to see whether they can help you uh, or also explore the possibility of having these rights to take screenshot or transfer files uh, for a, a data analyst or data scientist as well. And the other one, another common challenge is the lack of, uh, you know, expertise with R or the Odyssey packages, right? Like uh, uh, it, it is unfair to expect the IT team uh, to be a proficient user of R, uh, like a data scientist or a statistician. So. In that case, if you are depending on your IT team to execute uh, R packages, they have to do this along with their regular task, uh, which might have, which might through which they might have to address the concerns of a lot more users as well. So uh, you might have to wait, and uh, the time taken uh, might be a bit long. So which might ultimately affect your uh, you know study execution time and the result sharing time as well so these are some of the challenges and uh, 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 yeah for this uh, what we can do is like let's say if you cannot execute it yourself and if you want to seek your it team support to help it uh, it is better to list out the instruction to execute the study package at like at a detailed level so that you know they can just follow the step as it is and just do the execution and share us the results so that can work uh, yeah and uh, uh, another couple of challenges uh, that i know uh, uh, usually you know we might want to look at it is uh, when designing the r packages itself is the uh, site specific variation in the vocabulary mapping and uh, technical infrastructure right so of course for the technical infrastructure odyssey provides a lot of open source tool that you know makes it easy to handle this variations in the technical aspects let's say for example if i am using postgresql and uh, uh, the study lead, study lead team uses uh, uh, SQL Server. Uh, Odyssey package offers a solution called Database Connector, which makes sure uh, the, the, the code is generalizable for all the uh, database dialects. So yeah, so you can make use of tools like Database Connector and SQL Render uh, to, you know, uh, to uh, normalize all those technical infrastructure differences. With respect to site specific, uh, with respect to the vocabulary mapping differences, yeah, so it is always, uh, uh, like I told you earlier, it is always better to review the protocol at the initial feasibility analysis stage and recommend your uh, suggestions or feedback, if any, so that the study lead team can incorporate your uh, uh, 
can see whether they can incorporate your uh, site specific uh, uh, requirements as well of course uh, uh, they have to take a high level approach to this uh, we cannot incorporate all the site specific variation like if there's 10 sites participating and we cannot incorporate all the 10 sites uh, variation but we should look at a high level view uh, and make sure that it is like more or less generalizable to all the sites participating in the network study so that's one thing and then uh, regarding the irb approval uh, yeah so you might want to start your irb approval uh, process at the feasibility analysis stage upon knowing from the study lead team like if the study lead team says that your data source is feasible or eligible to participate in the study then you have to may, uh, you have to start with your irb process as soon as possible so that within a span of four or five months uh, you will get your irb approved so raising your irb request at the feasibility analysis uh, confirmation stage would be the appropriate time based on my experience of course uh, you need to check with the study team uh, and make sure that uh, the feasibility analysis results uh, is 100% accurate of the site's eligibility to participate. Else, uh, if it's not, then and later if you find out that your study is not eligible uh, during the execution stage, then you might want to cancel your IRB and things like that, uh, which is not good usually. So yeah, so these are uh, some of the challenges that we usually come across and uh, we try to solve them using this approach and it should be uh, uh, highlighted here that all this can happen only the first time you do a network study right like once you are aware of all this and for the subsequent studies you may not encounter any of these challenges because you have already resolved these challenges and you're aware of you know uh, what kind of challenges you might encounter so yeah, so uh, that's it from me. And uh, I'll let you guys ask any questions if you have, or folks in the call can also share their experience if any regarding uh, the network studies, yeah. Thanks, Selva. Sorry, I was talking muted. Uh, so do we have any question from the audience? All right, um, as we're, um, we don't have quite a lot of time, I'll then take that as a no. So Professor Chen, can you, um, so we'll move to the next presentation. Uh, yeah. So Professor Chen, would you share from your side or? Yeah, I will. Like. Okay, thank you. And um, thank you for a nice summary, uh, Selva. It was really great. Uh, so now, Selva, as Selva introduced uh, how we can conduct a RDC network study, and I'd like to share my experience and, and the preliminary uh, results from ongoing uh, international RDC network study. The title of the study is Comparative Risk of the Instance Instant Cancer Between System 2 Receptor Antagonists. My name is Chen Chen Yu, and you can find the chat. So as a background, uh, in September 29, 19, FDA warned about probable carcinogen and the MA in the most famous heartburn medication, which is uh, ranitidine or Zantac. It was really great, uh, really huge uh, news, but you know, uh, later it was uh, buried by the you know, uh, pandemic. So subsequently, Ranitin has been uh, voluntarily recalled from the market, so you cannot buy uh, Ranitin uh, anymore uh, in South Korea, United States, or other countries. And, and, and NDMA is classified as a probable human carcinogen based on, on the results from laboratory tests, usually uh, uh, when you test it on uh, rats or mice. And it was re reported that uh, oral intake of ranitidine increases urinary excretion of this probable carcinogen, but this report has been uh, retracted uh, in 2020 or 2021. So uh, we don't know that uh, if these low dose and the MNDA in ranitidine actually can increase the risk of cancer. So if and it is. If it is sure that uh, we need to recommend vigilant cancer screening for those 
who actively uses uh, used ranitidin. So I launched this study and I posted it uh, to the RDC forum uh, in 2020. And uh, I shared the study protocol. Uh, it was a 35 page long uh, protocol, includes details of statistical analytic plan and outcome definition with references. And this protocol has been uh, registered to EU PASS, like the like we register our protocol for uh, clinical trial to the uh, clinical trial that are so uh, I included those who used uh, H2 receptor antagonist uh, longer than 30 days and uh, uh, without uh, the history of previous cancer. The target was random user and the main competitor was other H2 uh, antagonists, including isotidine, roctatidine, famotidine, lafotidine. I excluded simetidine in this uh, main competitor group because I found that uh, there was no uh, sufficient uh, overlap between ranitidine and simetidine users in the feasibility study using uh, American, uh, Colombia, and South Korea data. The main pro primary outcome is uh, uh, mal malignancy, except non melanoma skin cancer, and secondary outcomes include overall cancer, cancer death, and 16 types of cancer. I employed uh, 100, more than 100 negative control outcomes, which is uh, falsification endpoints. And uh, I'd like to identify the hazard ratio of outcomes between ranitidine versus other H blocker users uh, by using propensity score model. So um, as a background, uh, the, uh, according to the Nyman uh, Rubin causal model, we need to satisfy three assumptions to draw causal inference First one is stable unit treatment value assumption, which is SAFA. Uh, it means the potential outcomes for any unit do not vary with the treatment assigned to other units. And second, the third one uh, can be combined uh, as a strong ignorability assumption. The ignorability or uh, unconfoundedness uh, means that uh, given the background variable, variable, treatment assignment is independent to the potential outcomes, which is really hard to uh, certify in the real world setting uh, in the observation study. And the positivity or overlap assumption is means uh, for any value of X, uh, treatment assignment is not deterministic. So how RDC study tries to draw causal inference be according to the uh, this causal model? Uh, we try to use proper appropriate phenotyping to certify the SAFA assumption. And we uh, we checked balance of more than 10,000 covariates between two groups to satisfy the ignorability assumption or confounded unconfoundedness assumption. The, and for the third one, uh, to, to verify the overlap or positivity, we determine uh, empirical equipoise if majority of patients have preference score between 0.3 and 0.7. The overall study design uh, is described here. So uh, I matched the patients by using a uh, purpose score model. Uh, and the target was an RT user and the computer was other H2 blockers. And I set the lag period because uh, lag, one year lag period. So uh, the follow up, uh, the time and risk starts after one year uh, uh, after the initiation of the drop. Uh, 12 data centers uh, participated uh, until now, and I'm waiting for the results from Taiwan. And uh, from the North America uh, databases, uh, I've got uh, more than 700,000 patients, and uh, we can identify the uh, these patients from the from European databases, including Spanish CDF uh, and English IMRD and German uh, IM. IQVIA Germany data, and actually we use uh, we've got the data from the IQVIA France, but there are no eligible patients for this main uh, comparison, so I uh, I omit that uh, database in this figure. And uh, from the four uh, Korean databases, uh, we've got these numbers, uh, including uh, NSH, uh, in, including the nationwide claim data and three EMR based data. 
And after uh, one to one for competitive score matching, we've got the 20, uh, 200,000 patients in each uh, group. And after the, uh, I used the two diagnostics, uh, includes uh, sufficient overlap or empirical equipoise and uh, enough balance. So uh, the databases were excluded, which is not, which does not, uh, uh, which do not uh, satisfy this diagnostics. After this diagnostics, uh, uh, the 12, uh, 200, 200,000 patients are uh, actually inc included included for the primary analysis. You can see uh, I've got uh, four databases uh, to satisfy these two diagnostics. So you can see that uh, these four databases from North America uh, and Spain uh, or Korea actually satisfy the sufficient overlap here. So we can see that more than 50 50% uh, of the patients are uh, in equipoise. Uh, I've lost, I lost uh, the blue dots in for this first figure, but you can see that uh, when we uh, screen uh, about 10,000 or more than 10,000 covariates, we can see that the standardized difference of mean uh, actually uh, are below 0.1, which is really uh, shows which shows really excellent balance between two groups. And the other databases actually do not uh, satisfy both of these two, uh, uh, either one or both these two uh, diagnostics. Uh, in the survivor curves, you can see that the incidence of cancer actually are similar in uh, both group and most databases especially in IQBIA ambulatory EMR uh, from uh, United States or uh, Columbia University's data uh, from North America again. In Spanish or Korean database, there is slight difference between uh, difference in the incidence of cancer uh, between two groups, but that over I see that overall incidence is really similar between databases, which I really think uh, important here. In other uh, six databases, you can see that uh, overall incidence of cancer is uh, similar between groups and it's similar between uh, databases too. Uh, when I conduct meta-analysis using all of these uh, results from different databases, I've got the hazard ratio of uh, 1.3, 1.03, uh, and which it was not statistically significant. When I use the the data uh, the result from um, four database which passed diagnostics, then I've got the hazard ratio of 1.04, which was not uh, statistically significant. Uh, it is a little bit heterogeneous, but uh, I think that it was because uh, all of these databases have uh, lots of patients, so confidence interval is relatively uh, sharp and narrow. That's why it shows the large heterogeneity. Or uh, conversely, it, it shows why we need international and and, and you know international data uh, network study because uh, the results can be very heterogeneous between the databases. Uh, that's all I've got for today. And if you have any questions uh, for this, please let me know. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alpha Bastion, for sharing. I do have one quick question. Um, so about the PSM, uh, PSM um, part, um, so were you using the standard PSM from Odyssey or did you make any kind of customization based on that? Oh yeah, I used uh, the, the basic uh, Odyssey standard PS model here. And uh, actually I employed many PS, models like uh, PS matching, one-to-one uh, -one matching or variable ratio matching or uh, PS stratification, but uh, everything is uh, from the Odyssey standard package. Okay, um, so did you do like the normal kind of patient characterization pre 
uh, you know, like the pre uh, PSM after PSM comparison thing, like was the standard package, like right. um, did the standard package like miss anything? Like did still see the difference between, you know, before and after or, or this kind of was solved by the P standard PSM? Yeah, it, it can be solved by the P, uh, standard PS matching or PS model. And mm -hmm. really, uh, before the uh, PS model, you know, uh, when there is a sufficient over, uh, significant overlap, like uh, in IQVIA, Ember, or NSGIS, NSC, the baseline uh, characteristics were really similar between two groups. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thanks. Is there any other questions or uh, comments on this? So, uh, uh, if, yeah. Chen, is it still too late for other people to join your study? I think it's a little bit late, but yeah, if you want to uh, join the study, please let me know as soon as possible. I'm waiting for the results from Taiwan, so you have time now. <laughs> Um, or I guess another question is, since this, uh, you know, this has been kind of more in the later stage of the study, so I guess the obvious question um, for me is like, are there any upcoming ones that people can get prepared um, using what Selva has just shared, you know, kind of, you know, the whole process and how to make things a bit smoother so that they can kind of pre pre prepare ahead of time. So I think this one, um, I think it's really kind of more in a later stage of the whole journey. So I was wondering if there are any kind of upcoming ones that that can be shareable <laughs> at this moment that we can, yeah. you know, just since everybody we're on the topic here. Yeah, uh, another ongoing uh, study of mine include CMOS, which is a uh, comparative estimation of the effect of anti-hypertensive medication on the occurrence of schizophrenia. And uh, as Selva, uh, you know, uh, joined the study, uh, so uh, he learned, uh, and we we together uh, figured out how to conduct this study uh, in and Selva's uh, Singaporean um, environment. So. If you want to join us, uh, I'm really happy to, uh, you know, I will, I'll be really happy. And another, uh, the study uh, I plan is that uh, the identification of the rare endocrine disease, which was presented in the earlier APEC meeting, and I will uh, I'll complete the uh, study package uh, within or this week or uh, with, uh, until the next next week, and I will post it. Uh, in the Addis Forum too, and I will uh, announce that in Addis APEC meeting too, again. Cool. So I guess for we can talk about that in the next call then. Yeah. Uh, in two weeks or so. Right. Cool. Right. Sounds good. Um, and I just post um, what uh, Professor Chen is sharing in our chat link, um, so you can kind of take a look at the. Um, uh, more detailed information about this ongoing study, which is definitely not too late to join, right? <laughs> yep. Cool. Um, so I think that's um, uh, there because we still have seven minutes. Any other questions from the audience? All right. Then for that, we'll just do a um, another re-emphasize so the Global Symposium is upcoming. If you have not signed up, please, and we'll be looking forward to kind of seeing you and talking to you in our symposium next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.